is lesson 9.3, page 498, solving quadratic equations using square roots. In this lesson, you will learn how to solve a quadratic equation using a square root, and you will also learn how to approximate the solutions of quadratic equations. Earlier in this chapter, you studied properties of square roots in lesson 9.1. Now you will use square roots to solve quadratic equations of the form ax squared plus c equals zero. Now I want you to notice something about this. This is standard form, but you notice how b is missing. Square roots is a great technique to use if b is zero. So if b is zero, it's missing. That means there's no b value in the problem. So if there is no b value in the problem or in a standard form quadratic, Square roots is a very easy method to use. And it's two steps. You isolate the squared term on one side of the equation, and then you take the square root of each side. So it's simple, it's quick, and it's great to use if there's no b value in our standard form quadratic. Now, when you use square roots to solve a standard form quadratic, one of three things will happen. You could get two solutions. If what you have squared is equal to a number bigger than zero, you get two answers. If your whatever you have is squared is equal to zero, you're going to get one answer, zero. And if your term squared is equal to something less than zero, you would get no real solutions. And maybe we should just quickly say, think about that for a minute. If I had x squared equals negative 4, it's impossible for me to find a value for x that I could multiply with itself that would give you a negative. So when you have a squared term equaling a negative, that's when you would have no solutions to the problem. Okay? Um, let's actually stay on this page. Let's do a few of these just so you can see the technique at work. So let's solve 3x squared minus 27 equals 0 using square roots. So the first step, we have to get the squared term by itself. So we will do that. Let's add 27 to each side first. So 3x squared equals 27. Then divide each side by 3. So x squared equals 9. Then square root each side. The square root of x squared is x, and when you square root 9, you get two solutions. You get positive 3 and negative 3. The solutions are 3 and negative 3. Or if you look at uh, b, x squared minus 10 equals negative 10. Add 10 to each side first. That will give you um, x squared equals 0. Square root each side, and x would equal 0. You only get one solution here, 0. Or let's look at this problem. Negative 5x squared plus 11 equals 16. We've got to isolate the square term. So take away 11. That would give you negative 5x squared equals 5. Divide each side by 5. I misspoke. Divide each side by negative 5, I meant to say. That will give you x squared equals negative 1. And squared terms cannot produce negatives. So this would have no solutions to it. You can use this technique to find any polynomial that's squared. Like you see in this problem, I have a binomial squared. If I isolate the squared um, term or the squared binomial, I, I can solve this using that technique also. So let's do it. We have x minus 1 being squared equals 25. You notice how, how my squared uh, binomial is isolated. So I can square root each side. That would give me x minus 1 equals positive or negative 5. And now to solve this, I've got to solve two equations. x minus 1 could equal positive 5, so I wrote that here. And x minus 1 could equal negative 5, so I wrote that here. And then just add 1 to each side. One solution, 6. One solution would be negative 4. And you can see those match what we have here. 6 and negative 4 are my solutions. So this technique also works if we have binomials or other type of polynomials being raised to the second power. I can isolate those, and I can use the square root technique. Easy to use. 
I would like you to pause the video and try one, two, three, and six. Go ahead and do that. Okay, and we're back, and you can look these over, um, one, two, three, six. If you are stuck on these or you're not getting these to work, please make sure when you come to class tomorrow that you ask about it and we can address this on the board, okay? Now, when you use square roots to solve a problem, you have to understand we might have to approximate the answers because these do not always work out nice and whole. You might need to round, okay? So when you look at the sample problem that they have, okay, 4x squared minus 13 equals 15. I've got to isolate the square. So I'll add 13 first. That gives me 4x squared equals 28. And then I can divide by 4. That gives me x squared equals 7. Then I can square root each side. So now that's where we get to that. When I square root each side, I'm getting the square root of 7 is 2.64571. Um, and so on, I want to round this to the nearest hundredth. So remember, the hundredth column is two places past the decimal point. You see how the number after that's a five. That means I should round this up. So my answer to this should be plus or minus 2.65 when I round it up. And you can see that's what they're getting here. They're getting a positive or a negative 2.65. So these are not always going to work out nice and whole. You have to be aware of that. What I would like you to do is pause the video and try 7 and 9. Now these, uh, they will ask you, because these aren't going to work out nice and whole, round your solutions to the nearest hundred. Okay, and here's your work for 7, and here's your work for 9. Again, if you have questions, uh, make sure you ask when you come in to class tomorrow if you are not getting these to work. You can use this technique to solve real life problems. In this question, we have a tank that has a height of three feet. You can see I marked that here. Its length is three times its width. And we know the volume is 270 cubic feet. Find the length and width. So the first thing is, remember, they said the length is three times the width. I have no clue what the width is. So if the width is W, the length would be 3W. We know that volume for a tank would be length times width times height. So let's replace. 270 is the volume. I'll plug that in for V. I know the length is 3w, I know the width is unknown, it's w and the height's 3, so when you multiply that together, you get 9w squared. Well, I can use square roots to solve this really easy. I can divide by 9, that would give me w squared equals 30, I'll square root each side, w would equal positive or negative square root 30. So when I put square root 30 in my calculator, let's do that. You can see I'm getting 5.477, so about 5.5. So the answer to this would be that the, the width would be either, it's about positive or negative 5.5. Now let's think, can my width be negative? Mm, no, it can't, so I can, I can get rid of the negative solution. It's got to be a positive solution. So my width is 5.5, about, okay? Now, my length would be about triple 5.5. So if I take 3 times the square root of 30, notice they're not rounding. If I take 5.5 times 3, I'm going to get 16.5, which is a little off. Take 3 times the square root of 30 and then round that. It's about 16.4 feet then for the length. The width is 5.5. And here's another sample problem where we can use square roots to solve. It says the area of an equilateral triangle with a side length of S is given by this formula. Solve the formula for S. Okay, so I've got to get S by itself. So um, first of all, let's get the square term by itself. So the first thing would be is I've got to get rid of this fraction, square root of 3 over 4. So I normally tell you to divide each side by square root of 3 over 4. Okay, now, remember, when you divide fractions, can't you multiply by the reciprocal? 
So remember, dividing is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. That's why on this side, what they're doing, instead of taking A divided by 3, square root of 3 over 4, they're going to multiply by 4 over square root 3. That's why they have 4 times A on top and square root of 3 on the bottom. Let me erase that out so you can see it. Okay, now that I have here, I can now square root both sides of the problem, and S would equal the square root of 4A over square root of 3. Okay, I just solved for S. Now, find the side length of the traffic sign that has an area of 390. All I need to do now is plug in 390 for A and put that in my calculator. Okay, so I'm going to take the square root of 4 times 390 over square root 3. Going to have to use uh, parentheses around that. Let me do that real quick. I have the old version of the calculator, so I'm doing square root. It opens parentheses. I'm opening another set of parentheses here for the numerator. So 4 times 390, close parentheses, divided by open parentheses, square root of 3, close parentheses, and then I'm closing parentheses for the whole radical. You see I'm getting about 30, which is matching what they have in the book. Okay? I'm going to pause the video here. If you have questions, make sure you ask in class.